Here. Mr. Here. Mr. Here. All right, first order of business tonight with the acceptance of the minutes from October 25th, 2022. Uh, everybody have a chance to review? Yes. Yeah, yep. good. Any changes, revisions? No changes. Yeah. All right, we could have a motion, please, to accept the minutes as written. I'll make a motion. Got a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. All right, second order of business tonight would be appeal number 227766. Area variance. Peter J. Pavone seeking an area variance section 24037 of district regulations in an R20 zoning district where 40 feet to the rear yard property line is required. The applicant can provide seven feet for the legalization of a 12 by 16 gazebo, thus requesting a variance of 33 feet. Where 20 feet to the side right property line is required, the applicant can provide eight feet for the legalization of a 12 by 16 uh, foot gazebo, thus requesting a variance of 12 feet. The property is located at 8 Reggie Drive, as an identified as tax grid number 6257011567679, Town of Wappingers. Uh, Mr. Pavone is ill and he won't be coming tonight, so he had asked us to postpone this public hearing. So we need to do a motion, right, to postpone? A motion to adjourn it to a date certain. Gotcha. All right, can I uh, please have a motion to adjourn this public hearing? What? Right, open it first and oh. then adjourn it. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. <laughs> can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Now, can I have a motion please to adjourn the public uh, hearing? I'll make a motion to, to adjourn. To what date? It'll be a quick night. November 21st. To the 21st November meeting. I'll second the second. adjournment to November 22nd. 21. 21. 22. Motion second. Correct. 22, right? 22. The 22nd. No, wait. What, what date? The 21st is planning board. 22nd. November 22nd. Okay. All right. November 22nd. We just live by the meetings. <laughs> All righty. So. We had a second. Is there all in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. All right. Second or third item on the agenda tonight is appeal number 227767, area variance. Jason and Mary Gordon seeking an area variance section 24037 of district regulations in an R40 slash 80 zoning district where no more than two accessory structures shall be permitted in a, any one family residential district. The applicant has six accessory structures, thus requesting a variance to allow for an 8 by 10 shed, a 10 by 36 foot shed, a 12 foot by 40 foot shed, row barn, and a 12 foot uh, diameter gazebo to remain. The property is located at 98-116 Dusty Trail and is identified as tax grid number 6057047443050. Seven four four three zero five in the town of Wappinger. Have a motion, please, to open the public hearing. I'll, I'll make a motion to open the public. Have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Mr. Gordon, please step to the microphone. Just as a uh, a note, uh, there's a three-member board tonight, so you have the option to postpone because a vote on this application tonight would need to be unanimous. If it wasn't unanimous, it would be considered no. So it's your option to move forward. Yeah, we can move forward. Okay, all right, good. And uh, just for the record, before, uh, I, I'm gonna ask you to, to uh, describe what you need, why you need it. We did get a letter from uh, a Mr. Patrick Murphy. Uh, Mr. Patrick Murphy did have some concerns. However, his concerns in his letter have no bearing or really don't uh, come into play with the variance tonight. Okay. So, but we just want to uh, mention on the record that we did receive the letter. Okay. All right, so for the public and the board, just quickly, uh, Jason, what you need and why you need it. Yeah, so as you guys saw on Saturday, there's uh, more than two secondary structures on the property. Some were there previous to my purchase of the property. Uh, and some were put there up upon my doing. So right. uh, with the understanding that at some point, like I said the last time I was here, I wanted to get that all taken care of with Al, uh, trying to get the, we were gonna do some work on the garage and sure. we had other thoughts for the property before we were gonna sell it. Anyway, that didn't happen, so here we are. Uh, the new buyers or the new owners uh, wanted me to try to take care of these things for them. So uh, here we are, we're 
trying to get this all taken care of so it's all legal and permitted. Um, so the first step, obviously, is to get the variance so that we can open up a permit and then go ahead and get them CO'd. Gotcha. Gotcha. We were all out there with different times. We were all out the property. Yep. The second time up there, actually, and then saw, saw the out structures. We did have a, a question, and, and Barbara cleared it up for us, on the count of the structures. Sure. The, the cottage doesn't fit in the mix uh, with the variance. Mm -hmm. So Barbara clarified that for us. So yeah. your count is correct. Okay. Right? The variance is written correctly, I guess is what I'm getting at. Okay, um, and like I said, we were up there and saw everything. I don't know if you guys have any other additional questions for Mr. Gordon. I just wanted to clear up, but I didn't quite catch the what this count. Well, the accessory dwelling is not an accessory structure. It's a home. Okay. So it wouldn't count in the list of accessory structures. For the record, I because it seems very um, extraordinary, so many structures. So for the record, this is 18.77 acres. This is a very large piece of property, and they've had horses. So a lot of these structures are used for the animals. And I just think for the record, right, the sure. size of the property comes into sure. play. Sure. You're right, and that certainly you know, weighs, into, weighs into the decision that you have almost 20 acres up there. Right, exactly. So, so this, just to count, this, this, the six structures are all basically behind the garage. It's the gazebo, two sheds. Mm -hmm. Two other barns. An eight by 10 shed and, mm -hmm. and, and two barns, which I'm counting as right. five, right? Right, and the garage would be another. Right, well the garage counts because it's a detached garage. Right. So the garage counts and then the gazebo is two, two oh, sheds, two barns. Right, you're gonna have, right? You're gonna have one, two, Okay, I thought the garage was an accessory structure. It is. it is. So, so if you add that, that's six structures. Okay. He's allowed two. two, three, four, five, six. six. Gotcha. Thank you. Good question. <laughs> it, it changed on us <laughs> while we were doing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot. Okay. I realize it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> any any other questions, you guys? I, I don't have any more questions. I think I'm good too. Can I have a motion, please, to um, close the public? Just ask if anyone in the audience. Oh, sorry. sorry. Anybody in the audience have any questions or concerns regarding this variance? Okay. Can I have a motion, please, to close the public hearing? I'll make a motion. Do you have a second? I'll second. All right. All in favor? Aye. So move. Can I have a motion, please, then, to grant or deny the, the applicant the variance? I'll make a motion to grant the variance. Um, Largely due to the size of the property, it seems uh, appropriate to have this number of structures. And uh, given the use as uh, an amateur, non-commercial horse farm, you know, it, we, we understand why, why it exists the way it does. Uh, the benefit can uh, be achieved through no other means. It's not an undes undesirable change to the neighborhood. The request is substantial. There's no adverse physical and environmental effect, and it is self-created. Okay, so we have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second. Can I have roll call, please be? Mr. Delacour? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Okay, so your variance is granted. Thank you. You're free to go. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. All right, have a good night. All right, next agenda uh, item on the agenda tonight is appeal number 227768, area variance. Hudson Valley Office Furniture seeking an area variance section 240-29-F1 and 240-29-F1-D of district regulations in an SC zoning district. Where no more than one wall sign per business is permitted, the applicant can provide two wall signs, thus requesting a variance to allow for a second wall sign. Where no more than a hundred square feet of wall sign is permitted, the applicant is seeking a total of 204 square feet of signage, thus requesting a variance of 104 square feet. The property is located at 1404 Route 9 and is identified as tax grid number 6157027077773 in the town of Wappinger. Can I have a motion, please, to open the public hearing? I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. Can I have a second? Second. All right, so moved. Is there anybody here tonight to speak on behalf? 
Could you please step to the microphone and just give us your name, please? Thank you. John Chickory, family owned business, Hudson Valley office. Gotcha. All right. For anybody who's listening in, the benefit of the board, brief description of what you need and why you need it. Uh, the property was formerly two separate businesses, uh, AC Moore and the Salvation Army. The facade runs approximately 200 feet. There's a, two marquee areas where the signs used to be. Our business is two separate businesses. We sell new and pre-owned furniture. We've uh, uh, renting both structures and we've knocked out the wall in between. So we have pass-throughs, but we have the pre-owned furniture on one side and the new showroom on the other side. Completely different look, completely different everything, mm -hmm. and indicative of two signs. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to, on the, the way the space is laid out, on the small side, which is our entrance side, there isn't enough room. Our name isn't ABC, it's Hudson Valley Office Furniture. <laughs> so, you know, you've got 28 letters and then, you know, uh, we have a logo that we want to put up. Gotcha. So uh, <clears throat> it certainly fits the space in our opinion. Uh, it's not much different than when you look at BJ's. You have BJ's on one and then the BJ's tire on the other. It's basically the same structure, mm -hmm. same company, two separate things. But that, that said, it, it fits the space. We don't also have the luxury of not using the two pronounced areas because in the middle there's a, a tree that blocks the area. So uh, <laughs> hopefully you guys were able to get a look at it. Uh, you should have pictures of what the signage will look like. I think it's appropriate. I don't think it's overdone, but I'll leave that to you. Yeah, we were all out there and took a look and see what you got going on. You had two marquees certainly lend itself, right? It to, would look to bland. It would look wrong without it. Kind of like a lopsided, right. but really it wouldn't. Right. Plus, now you did say you have two separate products too, right? And the Correct. two separate right. buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, two different products. Yep. Yeah, we took a look at it. They're pretty straightforward, you know, I, I think. If you guys have any other questions. I don't. Yeah. No. No, I don't either. Could I, anybody in the audience have any comments, concerns about this application? Okay, let the record show. No. Uh, can I have a motion, please, to close the public hearing? I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Can I have a motion, please, to grant or deny the applicant the variance? I'll make a motion that we grant the variance. Uh, the requested variance will not produce an undesirable change in the neighborhood. Uh, there will be no substantial detriment created to the nearby properties. There is other feasible means available, but uh, this is not an unfeasible means either. Um, the requested variance is not substantial in my opinion. The, the signs are uh, within the correct size visually. Uh, and this will not have an adverse effect or on the impact on the physical or environmental conditions of the neighborhood and uh, the alleged di difficulty is self-created. All right, do I have a second, please? Second. Roll call, B. Mr. Delacour? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. So your variance has been granted. Appreciate it. I'll write that big check. And get yeah. <laughs> You'll have the permit probably Monday or Tuesday with the holiday Friday. <laughs> Thanks. Have a good night. Thank All you. right. Next item on the agenda: uh, discussion, appeal number two two seven seven eight nine. It's eight nine. Eight, eight nine. Area variance. George Smith. Schmidt. Seeking an area variance section 24037 of district regulations in an R20 zoning district where 40 feet to the rear yard property line is required, the applicant can provide 28.6 feet for the installation of an in ground pool, thus requesting a variance of 14.4 feet, where 20 feet to the side left yard property line is required. The applicant can provide 13.1 feet for the installation of an in-ground pool, thus requesting a variance of 6.9 feet. The property is located at 27 Hilltop Drive and is identified as tax grid number 6258-04930064 in the town of Wappinger. Anybody here tonight to speak on this behalf? Please, your, your name and address, please. Good evening, George Schmidt, owner of 27 Hilltop Drive. Gotcha. OK. 
Could you please give us a brief description of what you need and why you need it? Okay, uh, so I was here previously in February, I believe it was, and had applied for a variance. Uh, basically, I believe the previous variance that was approved was 30, Thirty point eight offset to the rear yard and nine point uh, excuse me fifteen point one to the left side rear yard. Contractor had built the pool. We had all the approvals in place, and the our surveyor uh, hired a third party survey. Took the as builts, and the as builts indicated that the pool was located roughly two feet off towards the left and two feet towards the back, mm -hmm. more than what the variance had applied for. Got it. Yeah, I see the plan here. I do, I do remember this. Was, if I remember right, this, there was a, this is a new pool? It's a new pool in the same spot. The right. living ground pool got chopped out. And, right. And basically, and the, you know, the, 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 the issue is, is that uh, the contractor, Close. it's like, kind of like a kidney shape and he, he rotated it more than what it was. Mm originally meant to be, uh, gotcha. I, I believe that that's what led to the offset. Right, gotcha, gotcha, I, yeah, I do remember this. I remember seeing this too. You guys, do you have any, any other questions? No, I, I don't remember it. Don't I remember. have to see it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You vaguely remember it? Yeah. The, the uh, slide, the, the, we don't need a variance to the slide, right? No. That's not part of the Salica deck, it doesn't count no. for anything, right? Okay. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Right. Barbara, I do have a question though. That, Go ahead. It says the variances uh, from 1972 were different. Is that right? I don't know what the question was. Oh. Mm -hmm. the, He's in, reading in, the application. In the application, it says, uh, please explain why you need the variance. Existing in ground pool was built in 1972 when the rear yard offset requirement was 20 feet. Okay, okay, I know what you're asking. So back in the 70s, and part of the 80s, you only needed 10 feet to the side of the rear. Okay. But anything new had to meet today's standards. Okay. Ergo, why he came in for the first variance. Right. And then, unfortunately, his contractor, probably unaware of how tight it was, put it in. George, Mr. Schmidt, wasn't aware until the Asbilts came in. Right. And then, unfortunately, I couldn't approve them because they didn't meet the variance. And that's why. He's here again. Okay, so that is correct, and they, they yes. did. Okay, thank you. Got it. So just so you know, if he had put the pool in the exact, like he just replaced that pool, he would have been fine. But he was changing the pool, and even though it's a little bit, it is a difference. And gotcha. that's Just to answer, if that's a thought. Sure. For even for people listening, if you change it in any way, you have to meet the current code. Right, it was, for the most part, in the same footprint, just the, the original pool went out and turned to the right, this pool goes out and turns to the left, so mm -hmm. it's just a slightly yeah. different. Yeah. Slightly different, just enough. Got it. Okay, well, we probably should do a, a site visit again, right? I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we probably should do that. Um, when do we do this? When we do this, not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, are we running into Thanksgiving? Uh, no. No. Okay, what date? November, well, November 19th. All right, so Saturday, November 19th, we'll come out and take a look again. We'll be there about, about 9 o'clock. Okay. If I remember correctly, it was all pretty, pretty easy to, uh, to figure out when we got there. You know exactly what was going on. So why don't we do that? We'll do a site visit on the 19th, and then we'll put you on for a public hearing the following Tuesday. Okay. Would be the 22nd. And I think that's it. Hmm? That's it. B has work for him. Hmm. Yeah. He will give B has him. some homework for you to sign, right? item on the agenda discussion was appeal number 21773 
eight area variants, Neil Ryan Glasser uh, has also asked us to postpone. Uh, do, do we know the date that he asked us to postpone to? The 22nd. The 22nd, the next meeting. All right, so Mr. Blaster has postponed, so we need to do the same thing, open the public no, hearing. No, it's a discussion. Okay, it's a discussion. Okay, great. All right, so since this is going to be postponed to the next meeting, then I guess we have no further business tonight. One other thing. Can I have a motion, please, to adjourn? Make a motion. You have a second? I'll, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. So moved, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen.